everyone, my name is Rochelle Lucas Sanchez and today I'll be talking to you about the cultural fusion that occurs in El Barrio Chico, which is a Chinatown that you can find in La Habana, Cuba. So this all happened when Chinese men were brought to Cuba as indentured slaves in the mid 19th century. Now there were also enslaved African people in Cuba and when these Chinese men arrived at Cuba, it was forbidden for them to bring their wives if they did happen to be married. So many of these men ended up marrying the black and mixed race women of Cuba, creating much of the Chinatown population, which are people of Chinese descent. Right here, we can see a picture of a little girl. And that photograph that she's holding up is of some of her ancestors who were Chinese. So it's really cool because Chinese people, they began adopting many of the aspects of Cuban culture, and this awesome fusion of both cultures was created. Right below that picture, we can see a picture of um, the entrance of El Barrio Chino, which is in La Habana, Cuba, as I mentioned. It's really, really cool. We will now explore both Chinese culture and Cuban culture, and I'll explain as well the fusion of both cultures and what things they have in common. Now, in Chinese culture, food is so much more than just food. Food is a way to communicate with others, to bond with family and friends. Um, it strengthens business deals, and it's even used for medical purposes. In Cuba, food is very, very important as well. It represents the variety of cultures that Cuba has, including Chinese culture and is, it is also used to bond with your family and friends and also transmit all of the history that Cuba has. Now, many times you will find a fusion of both foods. So right under Cuban culture, you can see a picture of some black beans, some fried plantains, which is a very traditional food in Cuba. And in Chinese culture, you have dumplings, sometimes fried rice, and you can find a mix of both foods so sometimes people will fry rice have a side of fried plantains and maybe some black beans and some chicken and just have a mix of both foods which is very very awesome china is also considered to be a multi-religious country and religion is a very big deal in china five recognized religions are buddhism catholicism islam taoism and protestantism here we can see a pictures of some Chinese deities and right to the right we see a picture of some people in Cuba and the traditional clothing that they wear to celebrate some of their religions. The recognized religions in Cuba are Christianity, Catholicism, and Santeria, which is also known as Lukumi. And that makes Cuba a multi-religious country as well which is something else that both the Chinese culture and the Cuban culture have in common. Now, sadly, there aren't many native Chinese people left in Cuba because when Fidel Castro won the presidency, many of the Chinese people who lived in Cuba um, just left to other islands in the Caribbean, such as Puerto Rico, um, Jamaica, different parts of the world because they they just weren't okay with the presidency. Still, there are some people of Chinese descent left in Cuba, and the Chinese people who lived in Cuba definitely left their fingerprints everywhere around Cuba, especially in El Barrio Chino, which was of course created by these Chinese men and the families they created afterwards. Now, El Barrio Chino provides so many cultural aspects for people of Cuba, for both of those who are of Chinese descent, but also for those who aren't. A lot of these aspects are the Chinese New Year celebration, a martial arts school that's located in El Barrio Chino as well, called Wushu, some restaurants that serve Chinese food or Cuban, fo Cuban food, or a mix of both, as I had mentioned, and some famous Chinese Cuban people who you can learn about as well are athlete Lian Wong, painter Wilfredo Lam, and the women of the band Anacaona, which we have a picture here in black and white. These women were 
for the most part of Chinese descent. Not all of them were of Chinese descent, but there were many of them who were of Chinese descent. They were very, very popular. You might even recognize singer Celia Cruz. She was there as well. So that's very, very nice. To conclude my presentation, I just like to say that being a part of two cultures can be very, very difficult. Um, but it can also be very beautiful. I think that both Cuban and Chinese culture are just absolutely incredible cultures. And they just mix in the most beautifully and unexpected way. Instead of preferring the dominant culture or just dis dismissing the non-dominant culture, I think we, just, we should just love them both for what they are and the uniqueness that they both have. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Here are my references right here at the right where my cursor is pointing. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.